fast, physical, tactical. This is Red Bull Crashed Ice. Racing down towering ice tracks at speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. Join us on the journey to the Ice Cross Downhill World Championship. Crashed Ice is the pinnacle in the sport of ice cross downhill. This winter, we will race at three different locations, each with its unique track and its own challenges. We kick off the season in Yokohama, Japan. Great move from that outside gate again to take the lead. It's the first time ever a Japanese crowd will experience this fast growing winter sport. Second stop. The natural ice of Juveskula, Finland. Boy, this is a wiggly battle here. And there goes Marco Delago moving to the inside line right behind Mike Johansson. The final Red Bull crashed ice stop will take place in Boston, USA. Explosive out of the gate. Cameron Noss with a solid start. The American hero will continue the fight for another world championship title on home soil. Three titles are on the line. Trophies will be awarded for the men, women, and juniors. The Ice Cross Downhill World Championship is the crowning glory of the sport. Last winter's battles were among the toughest in the history of the sport. A two-time champion lined up against his challengers. Cameron Noss was ready to make history again. The goal for this season is obviously the same as any other season. I want that world championship again. I want to get three in a row, and yeah, I want to stamp my name all over it. And the women's champion, Jacqueline Legere, was undefeated for the overall title. Obviously, people are expecting me to have the three-peat, as they are calling it. Um, and yeah, obviously, I would like to win, so I'm going to try my hardest and go out there and try to get it. So let's look back at last season. The Red Bull Crashed Ice season opening event in St. Paul. 2018 has a redesigned track that will test the will and skill of all who attempt to finish here. Five seconds. From the start, athletes will have to deal with the massive cathedral drop. Getting a boost of speed heading towards the brand new BF Goodrich grip turn. One wrong move and you're a tread mark. Speeding up again down the steep ramp, the riders have to navigate a tricky right-hand turn and prepare for the Hyundai end section, which is a gap to drop leading to the long straight, which includes a devious set of speed rollers and the difficult double kicker. Assuming the competitors get through all of this unscathed, the final obstacle before the finish is the infamous corner booster. Manage that and the last sprint is all about position and foot speed to the finish line. Time to hit the St. Paul track for the first Red Bull Crash Dice event of the 2017-2018 season. An event with plenty of drama and a sign of things to come. St. Paul was great for me this year. Um, raced awesome, I thought. Um, solid heats, good starts, and uh, yeah. The American made it comfortably to the semifinals, where he met one of his greatest rivals, Canada's Scott Croxall. Wow, 
Wow, look at that start. Scott Croxall uh, having a little bit of trouble getting out of the gate fast, but in good position right now at the BF Goodrich grip turn. And he and Cameron Nas heading down towards that Hyundai end section in one and two positions. Pavel Klintra, Pakom Schmidt trailing behind. Look how quick Cameron Nas and Scott Croxall are in the glide. They're so solid there, no mistakes at all. Cameron Nas, Scott Croxall clean across that finish line. These two guys are insane competitors against each other, but they're very good friends as well. So uh, that was a great heat right there. And I thought that Paco Schmidt actually had a much better start than Scott Croxall did in this one. Yeah, he did. He just lost it a little bit in that first corner. I mean, you cannot make any mistakes with these guys. Now right here, Pacom looks like lost an edge, cutting it a little too tight. From there, they had no chance to catch up. You're not going to catch Scott and Cam on a run like that. With the one-two finish, both favorites advance to the final. This is the thing that we've all been waiting for, our men's final here in St. Paul. Look at this lineup, Scott Croxall, Cameron Nas. They've had battles before. There we see Michael Julianello, otherwise known as Iggy. The digital camouflage has been helping him all day long today. Right next to Iggy, we have Marco DeLago, a former world champion. He knows what it takes to win. Can he do it again here in St. Paul? Only time will tell, about 38 seconds, I believe. Then we have the two-time world champion, Cameron Nas. He wants to have three. Unbelievable. This guy is an incredible talent with tons of skill. And on the skill side, Scott Croxall. Let's go, boys. Fire it up. It took him a long time to get that world championship title. The monkey was off his back one year, and he took it, and he's been solid ever since. This is going to be a fantastic final. Here we go. Explosive out of the gate. All four of these guys. Cameron Nas with a solid start. Scott Croxall right there with him. Here comes Marco DeLago trying hard on the inside. He and Croxall get tangled up. And Croxall goes down, moving back to third place. Julianello right behind Cameron Nas. He's got a very strong glider in Scott Croxall coming hard. And look at the pass by Croxall. Nas, is down. Nas goes down. Croxall takes Iggy's the lead. Down. Here comes Croxall's Marco down. DeLago. Marco it's comes a big the... battle to the finish, and it's going to be Marco DeLago. Michael Julianello and Scott Croxall holding his arm. It looks like he hurt himself. What an unbelievable heat that was. A major mistake by Cameron Noss. Cost him the win here in St. Paul. This is definitely one of the best finals ever. Noss has a great start, comes in right on shoulder to shoulder with DeLago. But Marco keeps his speed really nice over this corner and they all kind of go down in chaos. It was unfortunate that I got pushed from behind in that first corner and um, I just got up and used all my energy, everything I had left in the tank to try and catch up. At that point, Cameron Nas had a good lead and it looked like he'd start the season with an easy win. I come over this second to last jump and I see Cameron spinning on the ground and I know immediately he's out of the race. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I know I thought in this moment, oh, that's the third place there. Not too bad. Nas catches his foot. Scotty oh. takes it a little too far. I jump over the last turn, the hip jump, and everybody is lying in front of me. Scott, yeah, he just sailed a little bit wide. Iggy comes in hot on his hip. And Marco DeLago. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that was kind of a present, a present from everybody. And in the review, I've seen like everybody wanted too much. Cameron wanted to suck it up more than he could and Scott went over the hip turn faster than he should and Iggy the same. So I think with going, you know, with going what I can do, I made this race and everybody else kind of wanted too much. And last but definitely not least, he made it a perfect event. He's a former world champion himself, qualified number one and he rose to the occasion. Here at Red Bull Crash Dice, your winner here in St. Paul from Austria, Marco! In the women's competition, Jacqueline Legere was the one to beat.
Last season, Legere crashed here, with compatriot Miriam Treponnier taking her first win. So Legere was ready to redeem herself. Maxi Plant, wow, right in there. Maxi Plant getting a good start with Jacqueline Legere, and it looks like she might even manage to get inside second place. Yeah, tries to make a pass, but it doesn't quite work. Oh, Plant gets a little bit too loose in the knees and went down and left the door wide open for Miriam Trepagne, who sneaks into second place behind Jacqueline Legere. Maxi Plant looking focused, trying to catch up with Miriam Trepagne. This is going to be a key moment right here. Maxi Plant pushing hard, but she's not going to be able to do it. Miriam Trepagne, such a good skater, and she manages to get over that last corner jump. Jacqueline Legere had that one on lock from basically the one quarter mark up there. But on top of the usual pressure on the champion, the first race always raises another question. Who has stepped up their game in the off season? It was kind of just the guinea pig of the season. You know, I trained super hard this whole entire off season, but really didn't know what it was gonna do or pay off with. And it looks like it's gonna be a clean win for Trunzo. I mean, I see them training hard and you know, that doesn't really, it gives me a little bit of push to train harder, but it comes down to just doing what you have to do and focusing on yourself. All right, so our women's final is in the gate. The first major points of the world championship on lock. Veronica Vindish there, she's been solid all day long. She won a Riders' Cup. There's Jacqueline Legere, two-time reigning world champion. Right next to her, Amanda Trunzo, so close last year. She definitely wants it. She's going to be motivated. And of course, Miriam Trepagne, the winner here last year. Can she do another win and gain some good points on the world championship for herself? Let's see how it breaks down. Here we go. Great start. We're both sitting right on the edge of our seat here as these ladies get out right away. It is Amanda Trunzo and Jackie Legere shoulder to shoulder going into the BF Goodrich grip turn, but it's Amanda Trunzo who comes out with a slight advantage. It's not massive heading towards the Hyundai end section. Jacqueline Legere staying close. Amanda Trunzo with a good lead. Miriam Trepagne sitting back in third. Legere biding her time, wanting to make sure she gets over that wall clean. Now it's about a foot race. It's going to go to Amanda Trunzo. Trunzo though. does it. She does it. She Woo. wins here in St. Paul. And that's a monkey off her back. And look who's happy. She is fired up. Absolutely fired what up. Man, girl. she is stoked. What a great race by Trunzo. Trunzo took home the win and 1,000 points. But finishing second, Legere was close behind. To come up with the win in St. Paul kind of just was a relief that, good, my, my training has worked and I'm here for the season. Flying the red, white, and blue here in her own backyard of St. Paul, Minnesota, your winner at Red Bull Crash Size St. Paul, Amanda Tronzo! What would the next stop bring? Ice cross downhill athletes will have their legs tortured on the 630 meter long natural ice track in Yveskula, Finland. Out of the start gate, it's a straight shot to the first snaking turn, which lines them up for the double tabletop. Line choice here will be key. Speeding up along the forest's edge, the next obstacle is the waves. Then comes the speed drop through the tunnel and the tricky chicane. By now, legs will be burning, so the athletes will have to dig deep to manage the step up coming at them fast and furious. Another snaking set of corners leads to the BF Goodrich rock drop. And not far after that, the big floater. The last 200 meters on this massive track will bring them to the glorious finish line. But remember, these riders will be doing this a minimum of 10 times, more if they make it to the finals. Good luck in Finland, everyone. I love the Finland track. It's, it's nothing too technical. It's a long track, a lot of skating, which is my strength. So I love it every time we go there. And uh, it's a natural track, so it's kind of anybody's game. And there's a lot of ruts that form, so you just got to be careful out there. But it's a super fun track. 
Trunso won in Yveskula last year and was looking to extend her championship lead. Finland wasn't my best. Uh, I, I don't tend to do good on that track. Um, I got passed in the very last corner. So, uh, yeah, that, that sucked. But, I mean, you learn from those experiences, so I'm grateful for that. With Legere eliminated in the quarterfinals, the American had a huge chance for a second win in a row. Here we are, folks, the Red Bull Crashed Ice Women's Final here in Avescula. Here we go. Five second warning! There's a great view, and Amanda Trunzo with a good start. Miriam Trepanier slides in right behind her. Bisa Clamola battling hard with Tamara Kaya to try and get position. Oh, Clamola goes down, spins out, gets right back up, and she's on her skates again. But she is well back by about 25 to 30 meters, even longer now, as our first three ladies start to get the pedal to the metal. Amanda Trunzo in a good position right now. She's got to play the game smart and strong coming up to this step up. It's been sketchy all day long. Toe picks it lightly, but no problem. Miriam Trepanier right behind her. The BF Goodrich rock drop, both of them manage it pretty well. Tamara Kaya, a good 20 meters back from Miriam, and she has got a good glide. She's a great skater. Will she be able to catch up? It might be too big of a deficit. As we see Amanda Trunzo, super solid. The fitness just playing a huge role, and the training for Miriam Trepanier in the skate parks in the offseason has also paid off. And look at this, it's going to be Amanda Trunzo winning two in a row, Miriam Trepanier in second place, and Tamara Kaya is going to round out the podium here in Eveskula, Finland, with a third place and a fantastic finish for Misa Klamola, the local girl who has just been fantastic. Oh, what a great story there. But today belongs to that lady. Amanda Trunzo from the USA. Two wins in a row getting congratulated from Cameron Noss. Started off with two wins is picture perfect, but there's still two more races and I just want to finish the season strong. Amanda Trunzo with the perfect start on her quest for the first women's overall title for the US. Yeah, let's do it right here. Meanwhile, tension was building in the men's race. I'm ready. Anytime you want. Hey, you tell me. You won't go. You tell me. I promise you. Scott Croxall, the 2015 overall winner, has been the man to beat in Finland. He won his first ever race in the nation's capital, Helsinki, and has won every race on this track so far. Yeah, Uvascula was awesome. I've had some awesome history, um, a lot of success on that track, being undefeated. Um, I was expecting to win that race as well. And again, the Canadian excelled on the natural ice, while others struggled, including 2016 and 2017 champion Cameron Nas. Yeah, that was just a mistake that uh, I shouldn't be making, obviously. Uh, just hit an ugly rut and uh, fell. I don't really know what else happened. I got hit in the head pretty hard there and yeah, just bummed. The sport of ice cross downhill has two pairs of brothers among the elite athletes. Scott and his older brother Kyle met in the first semifinal. <laughs> All right, this should be an interesting one. Mirko Lati, Kyle Kroxel, we've seen them battling all day long. Scott Kroxel and Denis Novosilov have been battling all day long. And uh, this should be a pretty stellar heat with, again, Mirko and Kyle lining up next to each other. Five second warning! Scott Croxall with a great start. Mirko Lati squeezing in there right around the corner, though. Kyle Croxall moves in, and he takes over the lead from his brother, Scott. Scott Croxall now in second place, relegated back there. And Mirko Lati sitting in third. Now, here's where experience plays a role. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts that Scott Croxall is talking to his brother, Kyle. Mirko Lati goes down and takes Novo Zilov with him, leaving the door wide open for the Croxall boys out in front. Barring any mistakes, I don't think we're going to see anything other than a brother on brother final here in Yveskula, Finland. What an unbelievable turn of events there. We've been waiting for this after the St. Paul oh controversy boy. last 
last year. Have we ever? Some of the top guys in the sport. We've never had a brother-on-brother -brother final. This is going to be intense. This is going to be very intense because we know there's history from St. Paul last year. And here comes Scott Croxall and Kyle Croxall across the line first, Scott Croxall in second. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a DeLago Croxall final. Unbelievable. Boy, there's going to be fireworks in the start gate before this thing even gets underway. Two pairs of brothers, the Croxalls and Austria's DeLagos, a duel with a history. Against the Croxall brothers, I'm always motivated to beat them, of course, because of this St. Paul thing last year. In 2017, they met in the semifinals in St. Paul, where the tight battle for the lead got physical. I've kind of turned the page on that. I don't really look back at it. Um, you know, there was some disqualifications and I took me out of the race night, so obviously I was upset and um, I showed that. Yeah, that drama, like it's, it's not gone out of my mind. Like it, I don't know, like every now and then I just start to think of it and then it like keeps looping in my head. But I don't know, it's been a year now, so I, I should get over it soon, I think. <laughs> There's Kyle Croxaw. He's starting from a lane that he's not used to starting from. He's been pretty solid out of the middle two lanes today. Can he do it? Luca DeLago, who's been explosive getting out of the gates today. He and Scott Croxall battled hard last year, and it was between these two that the drama began in St. Paul last year in the semifinals. Scott Croxall right next to him. How much of a head game is that playing with Luca DeLago? Don't know. And of course, there's Marco DeLago, the older brother, wants to protect his younger brother, but also wants to win the race and take another thousand points home. So it's all out for the top spot. Let's get going with our men's final. We've been waiting for this, Troy. Riders, yep. run it! Five second warning! Great start by Scott Croxall and the DeLago boys. Oh, Scott's down. and Scott goes down immediately with a huge hit on the boards at the top. And Marco DeLago pulls out into the front. Luca DeLago sitting in third place right now. And Kyle Croxall getting handsy with Marco DeLago. And he is in the lead with Luca DeLago right behind him. But here comes Scott pulling in from behind. We know he's so good at making those catch up runs from dead last to first. We've seen him do it before. Can he do it again? Scott's Marco DeLago is well in the back now, but Luca DeLago staying hard on Kyle Croxall, who is in the lead at the moment. Scott Croxall coming from behind, and the drama just continues between these two pairs of brothers. It's going to be interesting to see how this winds down into the finish area. Kyle Croxall, Luca DeLago, the last few strides is Luca DeLago going to try and come across that finish line. He's going to have second place. Holy smokes, folks. There was a ton of drama at the top, and it started once again with these two pairings. You're a joke. You're a joke to the sport. <laughs> oh my goodness. The drama just never stops. Just replay on. Oh, baby, back time. Go said in the starting gate that he was going to push me. It was just a dirty move on his part. Um, he shouldn't be pushing from behind, but um, he got disqualified and got a fine from uh, the sport. So it's good to see that things are starting to happen um, and he's getting, you know, taken out. So it's good to see. But Marco's action wasn't the only move the judges had a closer look at. Kyle crossed the line first, but the smile on his face didn't last long. I was just super excited when Luca got announced as the winner. Yeah, because you know, he had so much strange situations which kept him away from good, good positions in the finals. And this was kind of the opposite, like everything fell in place for him to win it. 
kind of crazy how it, it turns out, but I, I got my first big time race win. <laughs> and the winner on the day, an absolutely elated Luca Delago. Another turbulent chapter in the Croxall Delago history. The peace talks, a little delayed after this one. Next stop, France. The Red Bull crashed ice returns to Marseille's inner harbour, and while not the longest track of the season at 340 metres, Marseille boasts one of the most challenging courses of 2018. Out of the start gate, riders will be greeted by a quick drop and step up to an immediate left-hand turn, generating speed for the huge bridge, which leads to the even bigger BF Goodrich harbour drop. From there, it's a fast right-hand turn to the steps and some serious speed to the skate plaza. Now, it's time for the legs to go to work as riders navigate the best line possible to the Hyundai end section and the final challenging pier jump to the finish line. Past the halfway point of the season, the reigning champion was under pressure. After two disappointing races, he needed a win to keep his title hopes alive. Just gonna go out there, keep racing consistently, and hopefully stay away from the errors. Marseille turned out to be one of the most technical tracks ever, with crazy transitions and tricky obstacles. I didn't feel super confident on this track all weekend. After my round of 32 tonight was really the only point where I really started to feel confident out there in the course. So we'll see. I, I kind of feel like the Delago boys are going to be the ones that are going to take this one down, but at least one of them. We'll see. Cameron with a fantastic start. Luca and Marco. Hey, they're uh, getting handsy with each other there. Cameron solid out in front. Marco Delago right behind him. Luca Delago sitting in third place. This is where Luca could make the big speed advantage, and he does it. Marco goes down. Luca moves into second place behind Cameron Nas with a head of steam. And now it's all about staying on his feet over the Hyundai end section. A final jump, and he is going to take this one into the final. Marco Delago. And Kyle Croxall, they're not going to see each other in this final, maybe in the consolation. But right now, Cameron Nas has got to be stoked about making a final after struggling to get there in the last two big races. And Luca Delago, he's going to be hitting another final for himself as well. So he's going to be riding a high too. That was a fun situation because I crashed. And the very same situation happened the year before where Luca crashed, I overtook him, and in this year's race, I crashed at the same spot, exactly the same way, and he overtook me and advanced. When I fell down, I just had to laugh in that moment because I knew that the same, the very same thing just happened to me. <laughs> Luca and Cameron advanced to the final, with American Maxwell Dunn and Scott Croxall joining from the second semifinal. Uh, Marseille is a beautiful city. Um, I was happy to get back there and race in some warmer weather. Um, we had a super challenging track with some crazy features. And um, yeah, I, I felt good on the track and was happy to make it to the final. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it is the time for our final Cameron Nas, the two-time reigning world champion, the record holder for the most wins ever. Luca Delago in there as well. We've seen him get out of that gate fast. Scott Croxall, what do you say about this guy? He is always quick, always solid, always in the mix and always ready to battle. And Maxwell Dunn, he isn't really the mystery player here anymore, but uh, his high ride after a win at the Riders' Cup may carry him. But he's in a really rough position on the outside gate right next to that man right there. As we know, Scott can get out of the gate fast and he is a solid competitor. The two-time world champion, he wants to have a win here. He needs to have a win here to stay in the mix, to get a third world championship title. He wants those 1,000 points, but then so does this young man right here, Luca Delago. He's only competing in the Red Bull crashed ice with the exception of one Riders' Cup, and this is gonna be a big heat. Warning. 
Goodness gracious, what an explosive start by Cameron Nas and Maxwell Dunn. What a great come from the outside, blocking one of the best skaters in the world in Cam or Scott Croxall. Cameron Nas way out in front. Luca DeLago trailing at the moment, and this is pretty tight, but look at the pass nice by pass. Scott Croxall on the inside of Max Dunn. Cam Nas well out in front. Scott Croxall looking to make a catch and a pass. It's not going to happen, though. Cam was just too focused and just too strong. Scott wow. Croxall with a second place. And I am not sure. I think it was Max Dunn who came across in third. So he's got himself a podium. And that is a fantastic job by all four of those guys. Luca DeLago in the mix as well. And he's going to be not satisfied with a fourth place, but I tell you what, that is an amazing heat we saw right there. Cameron Nas just pulling it all together here in Marseille and doing what he needed to do to get those 1,000 points that were absolutely critical to his season. That was a Nas from last year right there. Cam just explodes out of the gate, so smooth. Oh man, he just can't get any better than that. Took the whole shot um, right when I got to the chicane. I just figured, hey, you have to go as fast as possible through this harbor drop. Once I nailed that, I felt really confident that I'd be able to take it home. This pass was really nice on Scott. I mean, he's somebody you can never count out. No matter where he's at, I don't care if he's in fourth and 50 meters back, he's one of the few guys that will always come back on you and make you pay if you make a mistake. And there you go, Cameron Nas taking his first win of the year. And securing valuable points to keep his overall hopes alive. Yeah, I'd like to have a little bit more of it, but this is a good start for the rest of the season. Uh, it would have been nice to start the season with some wins, but uh, I've been skating well, and I'm just really pumped to get this one out of the way, and hopefully it'll carry on to the next few. Nothing better than the champagne shower if you can manage it. Max Dunn, Scott Croxall, Cameron Nas enjoying that moment. In the women's competition, all eyes were on Amanda Trunso, but after dominating at the first two events, she struggled with the technically challenging track in France. And Moran gets a really good start, pulls out in front. The battle here between Trapanier and Trunzo as they come to the BF Goodrich Harbor drop. Oh, it's a squeeze, but it's Trapanier getting the advantage. Trunzo goes down. This could change the whole face of the battle for the championship. Trapanier struggling now to find her footing. Here comes Trunzo. Trunzo makes the pass. Oh my goodness. What a set of drama happening up at the top. Amanda Trunzo now just making a pass on Miriam Trapanier coming to the Hyundai end section. Trapanier trying her best to catch up. But Trunzo stayed in second and moved on to the next round. Disaster was averted, but the road to the final was not an easy one for the championship leader. I don't really honestly know what happened. I don't know if it was the jitters getting them all out, uh, knowing I could clinch it there or what it was. Amanda had the biggest problems there going down and then at the steps is where it all fell apart for Miriam. I fell at the harbor drop and I saw Miriam pass me, but then I looked up and I saw her kind of struggling on the next features of the track. So I knew I just had to bust it and give it my all. If you're just a little bit off stride, it's so hard to get back up. You know, I just kind of took it from, from that point on. I was pretty confident in that last part of the track. So, you know, from that point on, I, was, I knew I had it. Amanda Trunzo from the USA, trained so hard in the off season, training with Guys like Cameron Nas to get herself fit and ready to go. We didn't see much from Anais and what she's doing in the off season, but she has definitely shown that she is wanting to be at the top of the podium here. Jacqueline Legere, she is the reigning world champion. There you can see the number one on that shoulder patch. She's looked really strong on this course. And then Sandrine Rejean, the one and only French woman in the mix here, and the fans are definitely gonna be on her side. How much is that gonna push her along here in this race? Let's see.
Man, that was a long wait for the gate drop. And look at this. Oh, Anais has a bit of problem there. Jacqueline Legere takes advantage with the whole shot. Amanda Trunzo in second place right behind her. That's going to be tough for Anise to try and catch up. Jacqueline in the lead. Amanda right on top of her now as they come towards the stairs. That is a treacherous right-hand turn. And all of the ladies look like they navigated it just fine. Amanda Trunzo in solid position number two. Jacqueline Legere out in front. Amanda's got to win this one, otherwise the battle goes down to Edmonton. It's going to be a tight one coming to the finish area. A last minute push by Amanda. Oh, she puts a foot down, and that one's going to go to Jacqueline Legere. Amanda Trenzo comes in second place. Anais Moran in third. Sandrine Rejean in fourth. And the ladies mob Jacqueline because they just realize what's happened here. We have a race that's going to go down to the last event of the season in Edmonton. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, you know, that felt really good, um, especially before the last race. It just keeps the ball rolling um, and use that momentum. Pulled it all together in this run. Yeah. Just wasn't quite enough to beat Jacqueline. I mean, she has really dominated this track all week long. But I got to give Trunzo props. She had some pretty sketchy runs earlier in the night. Comes together, takes number two. Yeah, it could work. I've been training so hard, so the confidence is there this year for me. And I, you know, if something happens, it's just going to get right back up and keep going and not give up for the whole entire race. Leger was back in the title chase, but Tronzo still had a clear lead going into the last event in Edmonton. The final event of the Red Bull Crash Dice rolls into Edmonton, Alberta in Canada, and the track promises to be a doozy. A new start location adds more length to the course, offering a long downhill sprint, leading to the first right-hand corner and one and a half meter high gap drop. The riders will need to build up speed now to clear the Canadian big air and prepare to break hard, heading into the 180 degree BF Goodrich traction corner. Apropos, traction is the name of the game here. Following this massive direction change come the Maple Leaf and Speed Rollers, followed closely by the very tricky Hyundai N section. With two height variations and off-camber wedges, a good line here is critical. The women's race for the World Championship Trophy was about to reach its climax. Amanda Tronzo just needed to reach the semifinals to earn enough points for the title. It all boils down to this event in Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. We will crown two ice cross downhill world champions in one of the closest seasons ever. Yeah, I feel great going into this last race. Um, obviously, it's kind of in my control, and I can kind of steer the way to what happens at the end. So I love that feeling, and uh, this track looks great. It's a lot of skating, which I think will suit me well, as well as it's a longer track. So I'm super excited. Amanda had to win her next heat. Jacqueline could only watch and hope from the sidelines. Um, the first year, I was kind of like wanting more challenge, so I have it now. and. Um, it's here, it's fun, it uh, makes it a bit harder and makes it a bit easier on me for media requests. <laughs> so it's good having her up here with me. The quarterfinals in Edmonton would indeed decide the title. Good start. Tamara Kaya with a fantastic start. She's got the whole shot into that first big corner. And here comes Amanda Trunzo. Over the Canadian big air, and, Ma and Amanda takes a quick lead there, just passing lightly Tamara Kaya as they get into the BF Goodrich traction corner. And there's a little bit of carnage at the back, but nothing is affecting Amanda out front as they go through that soft section of the course. Amanda back on the gas, and she's getting the lead open a bit more through the narrow section of this course. She's got to really stay on her feet here, oh, and she yeah. has a world championship in her hands. It's all up to her right now. And it's going to be a clear win here for Amanda Trunzo. <laughs> she does it. There is our new world champion. Wow. She Look is, how pumped she is fired up. Amanda Trunzo won her first ever Ice Cross Downhill World Championship, becoming the first woman to beat Jacqueline Legere for the title. Getting uh, first in that quarterfinal, knowing that once I crossed that finish line that I was going to be crowned the world champion. So, you know, that was definitely the defining moment. But, you know, I knew I had a couple more heats that I wanted to get through. So I just had to regain my focus and, and go through the next heats. 
Tronzo moved on to face Legere in the semi-final and won again. Just tripped over that hurdle there. It's a hard feature and knocked the wind out of myself, tried to finish and it wasn't quite good enough. Jacqueline was out. Amanda was unstoppable. She took the race win for the double in Canada. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure it's quite sunk in yet, but you know, I'm feeling super excited. I worked incredibly hard this off season, so to see it all pay off and come together is just awesome. Holy Heavy, Holy heavy is right. That is the first place trophy for Edmonton 2018, and that's not the only hardware she's going to be taking home. World Women's Champion 2018 from the United States of America, Amanda Trouzo! In the men's title race, Scott Croxall came into the final event with a small advantage. Having collected some extra points with a victory in the second tier competition, the Riders' Cup. Even so, there were still three contenders facing off for the title. And as the draw would have it, they all met in one semi-final. Yeah, I'm very ready. I mean, it's been a long season, seven weeks of racing in a row. Watching you. Only the fastest two would move on, so at least one contender would be eliminated before the final. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna try to win this race, and if I win this race, then there's nothing else I could have done. That's a fucking goal. It's uh, this all or nothing situation. I, I love that stuff. That's really fun to be in. And uh, in the past, it was always good for me. So I'm, I'm happy to be in this situation too. All right. So coming up, we will have the men's semi finals. Let's take a real quick look here at heat number one Cameron Nas, Kyle Croxall, Scott Croxall, Marco Delago. This is going to be fireworks. Wow. That is a semi. This is a final any other time, but it's a semi-final here, folks. There's Marco Delago, and there's Scott Croxall. I was mentioning the tension. The tension was between Scott Croxall and Marco Delago, stemming from last year in St. Paul. And there we go. Semi-final heat number one, almost locked and loaded into the gates. All three of our guys vying for the world championship right here. One of them will be out. Okay. Remember, only two riders move forward from this heat into the next round. Will it be Cameron Nas, Scott Croxall, Kyle Croxall, or Marco Delago? You could toss a coin up in the air and choose who's going to win this one. Five seconds warning! Wow, great start again by Kyle Croxall. Scott Croxall shoulder to shoulder. Here comes Marco Delago. He makes a fantastic pass, squeezing through the middle of the big Nas boys. Nas is down. Kyle goes down. Nas goes down, and Marco goes down through the traction corner, the BF Gooders traction corner, and it's the Croxall brothers alone out in front. And that's not a thing that you want to let happen with two big, strong bodies like those guys out in front. Marco Delago battling hard Dog with Cameron down. Nas. He gets hammered into the boards. Cameron Nas looking for a line in. And that means Cameron Nas is going to be eliminated here in the semifinals. And Scott Croxel what a turn of is event. the new world oh champion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that wow, is unbelievable. I did not see that coming. What an amazing race. What an amazing race. Nobody expected that. I don't know what happened there. We're going to have to look at that BF Goodrich traction corner. That's where everything happened. I got into first place before that first U-turn there, and unfortunately it went down. I was in fourth coming into that U-turn, and um, I just carried my speed and my edge work and passed the boys, and I heard Kyle behind me yelling the whole way down after that, just keep going, so I didn't bother looking back, and um, I pretty much celebrated like that was the final heat of the night after that. Scott Croxall, the 2017-2018 Ice Cross Downhill World Champion on home ice. Yeah, it means everything to me. Um, I've been in the sport for a long time and once I started hitting the podium, it was my goal to be number one and to win a world championship title. Um, to do it twice, I never thought it would be possible. So um, I'm just super stoked and happy to be here. 
prepped and we set up for our men's final. Well, this is what we've all been waiting for here. Probably none more than one of the guys racing in this heat, Scott Croxall, who has been crowned the 2017-18 Ice Cross Downhill World Champion one heat earlier. There he is. This is going to be a fantastic final with his brother Kyle in there. Luca DeLago, who could well be a spoiler on this one. And Maxwell Dunn, who is a lot of fun to see race. Big celebration as these guys get ready to go. And there we see Luca DeLago from Austria. He wants to win this one. He wants to have a second win on the season. Kyle Croxall right next to Luca, the big Canadian. He's a former world champion. He knows what it takes to win. And of course, the new world champion, two-time world champion. Now he joins that exclusive club, Scott Croxall. And right next to him, Maxwell Dunn, a man who could well, down the road, become a very, very effective racer, if not a world champion of his own. Let's see how this one breaks down. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Always the competitor, full pressure, and Max Dunn, wow! Great start again from that outside gate. He is liking that one, and he is right shoulder to shoulder with Kyle Croxall, and they all come in Scotty's together down. into the BF Goodrich traction corner, and Scott and Kyle both go down there. They're back on their skates. Now watch what happens here. Scott Croxall dead last, Luca DeLago out in front, just behind him, Max Dunn. Scott Croxall's been in this position before, but he's got a lot of ground to make up. Coming through the Hyundai end section, Luca DeLago is gonna, gonna win another it. one. He's there got go. two wins on the season, and this time it was a win that was clean from top to bottom. Wow, what a great finish by young Luca DeLago. Unfortunate for Scott Croxall, but you know what? He's the world champion, so he can't really complain. No, I don't think he's too sad right now. Luca DeLago, a guy we've been talking about for years. So much skill, so much talent, trained so hard. Seeing that guy get two wins this year is just incredible. He's definitely gonna be right there next year competing for the world championship. Can't say enough about Max Dunn, also a guy right in it, and there's our world championship, Scott Croxell. Been the top of the sport for the last seven, eight years. Super deserving, steady Eddie we call him, always in the finals. You know, just a little tough go in the corner there. Yeah, let's see what happened in that BF Good Traction corner. Made a risky move to me coming in the inside and you just, there was no way to hang on there. Lucas stays out of the clutter, keeps his speed and makes a nice pass on Don and just stayed there the whole way down. That's been a magical season and to have my first real win, it's just like, that's what I dreamed about for a long time. Amanda Trenzo and Scott Croxall, your new world champions in ice cross downhill. The most important thing for my season was just consistency. Making it to that final heat, uh, four out of four, is how you win the world championship, and uh, I think I proved that this year. Two trophies decided. Still one more story to be told. The story of Mirko Lati, junior world champion. Introduced in the 2016-2017 season, the first title was won by a promising rider from Finland. Of course, there's a little bit more pressure than last year, but um, I don't mind. <laughs> Mirko Lati was the junior to beat. In his first two years of racing, he won every single event except the first one. I crashed pretty hard in Marseille in the training. I was in the hospital uh, like 15 hours there, so I couldn't make it in the shootouts. But failing at his first steps into the sport didn't stop him. If anything, it made him stronger. I 
I have a personal mental trainer, so we've been talking about that a lot, so it's, it's now gone and I'm focusing on that new race. Last year, he became the first rider in any category to pull off a perfect season, winning all four events on the tour and his second Ice Cross Downhill World Championship trophy. But this season, age 23, he will make the full transition to the men's race. Of course, I need to train more men's world championship. I think there's a lot of years in front of me, so there's time to progress. The next generation is ready to challenge the favorites. Heart rate's pretty high there. The upcoming season is in the gates, and again we ask, who has stepped up their game over the summer? <laughs> oh, I obviously, my goal for every single season is to get back on top of that podium. Uh, I want that number one spot. I want to be world champion again, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure Scott and I will be battling it out once again next season, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, my goal is to uh, bring it back to the United States once again and uh, defend that world title. This season, the sport will grow once more by adding a third race series into the Ice Cross Downhill World Championship Tour. Three ATSX 250 races, three 500 point races, as well as the three 1000 point Red Bull crashed ice events will provide the stage for the next title fight. Uh, my wish is always to be world champion. I'm a very competitive person. I want to be first. And if not, I want to be on that podium. So, um, you know, consistency, I want to be in every final heat of the season. Red Bull crashed ice is the pinnacle in the sport of ice cross downhill. This winter, we will race at three different locations.